good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Grain Storage Webinar on Hygiene and Structural Treatments. Uh, my name is Chris Warwick. I'm a consultant based in Horsham, Victoria, and I manage the GRDC's Grain Storage Extension Project. Now, my role uh, in this project has developed over the past 10 years uh, and since the very sad loss of Peter Blotter last year, and I now service the GRDC's southern region with Grain Storage Workshops and information such as this. Um, as I mentioned, the quick housekeeping, um, the Q&A window allows you guys to ask questions. Um, yeah, a couple of you have, have worked that out already. Um, just click on the Q&A to open a window, type your question in the box and, uh, and click send. Uh, if you'd like to send an anonymous question, um, you can select send anonymously if you don't want to be identified. Um, and please feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, you, you might have already come with a few questions, so feel free to put those in straight away or as you think of them, um, in order to answer them as we go or at the end. But by all means, type those questions in. I'd like to thank the BCG for facilitating this session for us today. Um, uh, I appreciate their support and, and promoting these workshops for us. Um, if you are having any trouble hearing me um, or can't see the PowerPoint presentation, please let me know via that question box. Rightio, let's get into it. On-farm storage hygiene and structural treatments. Here we go. Um, just as an overview to help us figure out where hygiene and structural treatments fits into the, the bigger picture of managing on-farm storage, it's really the first step. So if we look at um, in the whole system, we're really about trying to prevent pests, prevent the infestation of pests, prevent the damage of their grain. Um, if we don't get that right and, and we still have to do a pest control, then we're looking at phosphine for on farm pest control or commercial fumigator. Um, and then lastly, we also want to consider grain quality. So managing moisture and temperature. But in the pest prevention side of things, hygiene and structural treatments, along with aeration cooling, protectants and monitoring, they're about pest prevention. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, pest prevention, trying to start clean uh, and, and start with a, 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 um, a good fresh storage with, with, with no pest contamination. A bit of research to, to kick things off with. This is some research done by the post harvest research team um, up in Queensland through the Department of Ag. Um, this is to give you a bit of an idea of how quickly um, grain storage pests can breed up. So we've got months along the bottom. i just grab my little tool here so you can see my mouse. So you can see after three months, this is in a one ton um, bulk bag. After three months, that bulk of bag just left in the shed. We've, we've reached nearly 5,000 beetles. After six months, the numbers really spike up to the, near that 30,000 mark. So you can see that those few, uh, maybe half bags or, or bits of grain left lying around throughout the year, um, often left there for longer than six months. We get, it, get a really good understanding of how quickly they become a breeding ground. So, that's part of hygiene is, is to be able to um, to be able to clean those those bits of grain up as well, not just in the in the uh, in the silos themselves, but around the sheds and, and, and um, bags of grain left around the place. Something else that's um, we've recently found um, again through a bit more research. It was on a, a side note actually to some research was someone asked the question well for every adult insect because that's what we're seeing that's what we're monitoring really is the adult stage of the life cycle how many uh, adolescent insects if you like how many egg larvae pupae can we actually expect for every one adult and the research found that for every adult you can find um, in grain, expect 80 to 90 egg larvae pupae. So it, um, it's easy to see how numbers build up quite quickly. 
So that's why we look at um, prevention is better than cure. We, we really don't want to get to the point where we find insects because as we've just seen, they'll breed out really quickly. Um, just gonna grab my little spotlight tool again. And the hygiene to me uh, and to what the research shows is really about preventing an unwelcome environment for pests. And what we know is that they like, primarily they really like shelter. They like to be sheltered from the, the extreme con conditions uh, of the ambient. So they don't like getting really cold, they don't like getting really hot. So somewhere they can shelter from the heat and from the cool. Um, and then secondly, they, they need a bit of food. So anywhere that you can think of, silos are the obvious spot, um, nice and sheltered, a little bit of food left in there. But other things around the, around the farms like your, your seed silos or the, the, the chook feed or um, machinery that's in the shed that might have a little bit of grain residue left in it. Um, all those places are, are really good harbours for insects. Even consider um, hoppers and things left around the silos that might be overturned so they don't fill up with water but actually create a nice little shelter. And if there's a bit of grain left on the ground that they're covering up, then there's shelter and food all of a sudden. So consider those places as, as insect harbours as well. Um, even hay and grass around the silo that can provide a bit of shelter. Um, a shed of tin, a rubbish, that sort of stuff lying around silos um, can all provide a bit of shelter as well. Once we're, we're, that, That's the hygiene um, line of things. The second one, so we've done hygiene, we want to look at structural treatment. So that's about killing any insects that may be left after we've done the, the cleaner. But let's look at hygiene first. Okay. So, as I said, hygiene uh, is not just limited to in, in the silos, but um, if we look at the picture on the top left here, we've got um, a bit of grain left in a, in a hopper underneath a silo. A really quite a nice breeding ground there for insects to, um, to start breeding away and quickly infest around the silos. Um, the bottom left there we've got in the back of a truck. Again, remember equipment in, in the cleanup. Make sure all the trucks, chaser bins, mother bins, um, trailers and all those sorts of things that the grain uh, go through are really cleaned up well. When we're looking at silos, um, even consider the design of the silo and the pad that the silo sits on. I've seen silos um, put on, on a concrete ring rather than a concrete pad. Um, it, it really, it makes them a bit hard to clean. If we use a nice smooth concrete pad, it, it really does make hygiene a lot easier um, to be able to sweep that grain up. When we're looking at spilt grain around silos, um, People often get, get quite um, panicky about spilt grain around silos. To be honest, grain that's, that's spilt thinly across the ground, sort of one grain thin, doesn't provide enough shelter for insects to live that well. Um, a grain piled up, if you've left a pile of grain beside a silo, that will provide enough shelter for insects to live. So just consider that when you're doing your clean. Um, again, headers are a really common spot for, for find insects. Um, in the top right hand picture there, um, we've got uh, some trench aeration in a big flat bottom silo. And something that we, we often see is uh, particularly the imported silos now are coming in with big um, full floor aeration systems. We've got a, a false floor, perforated floor um, for aeration. The issue with those sorts of setups we find is that they're, they're impossible to clean under. So after a few years, there'll be a bit of dust residue, a bit of grain residue fall through that floor. And again, create a perfect harbour for insects to breed under that floor. You come along and put harbor, fresh harvest grain in, uh, and, and as soon as you put it in, the insects are infesting it. So um, that trench aeration, for aeration cooling, trench aeration is, is quite adequate. Um, and, and, and the real advantage is that it's easier to lift up and clean out. Um, so you can do a better job on hygiene. So again, when you're looking at new silos, whether it be flat bottom or cone bottom, have a look how easy they are to clean. Um, how many spots that grain can get stuck there. We're looking at types of cleaning, obviously the broom, um, compressed air and water for the cone bottom silos is a good idea. And then remembering to dispose of that waste grain. So not leaving it in a, a bucket or a wheelie bin beside the, um, the, the silos uh, or in a pile. Uh, we actually want to get rid of that grain. So go on, um, 
bury it, burn it, feed it to some, some livestock. Um, we need to get rid of it somehow. Um, even spread it out thinly across the ground so it will germinate. Um, some way to get rid of it. Machinery. Here's, here's some more research just to try and highlight. Um, this is, the guys up in Queensland again did some research for us and, and asked a, a harvest contractor who considered that, that he cleaned his head fairly well at the end of the season. They said, can we catch the first uh, 40 litres of grain that goes through your header at the start of the next season? And he said, yeah, no worries. So they went along with the bucket and, and collected the first 40 litres of grain that went through the header. And they actually stopped counting when they found a thousand less of grain borer in that first 40 litres. So that's a header that was thought to be reasonably clean, but they hadn't used dry side in it. They hadn't used a, uh, a diatomaceous earth product. So again, encourage you what you think might be clean is, is still an insect harbour if we don't use a structural treatment on it. What time of year should we clean up? A again, we, we look to research to tell us these answers. Um, we, and we rely very heavily on, on what, that, what that research finds. And what it finds is that insects will breed and travel when, when the temperatures warm up. So you can see in June, July there where the temperature's cold, Insect reproduction is slowed right down and insects don't tend to move around as much. So that's the best time to do our grain storage hygiene. So um, even this time of year, we're in August now, um, before the temperatures really start to, to warm up in the spring, good time to do our hygiene, clean them up, get rid of them before they start breeding and moving around the farms. So that's hygiene, structural treatments. What are we trying to do with structural treatments? Um, the main one that we would suggest people look at is a diatomaceous earth. So that's a, a naturally occurring product. It's a mine product, not chemical based. Um, it's actually, if you put it under a microscope, it's actually, um, it's very abrasive shaped and it actually scratches the waxy cuticle on the insect and they end up dehydrating. Um, so it's a physical mode of action. So Insects can't develop resistance to it. That's why we really like the product. Uh, and therefore is effective on all the main grain storage pests. Um, so that's what we're trying to do is, is we clean the storage up, create an unwelcome environment, and then we're really trying to kill any insects that may be left there. I often get asked about um, other products people think look similar like lime. Um, again, the testing that's been done shows that lime was really not effective. We need, we need a diatomaceous earth product, um, something like a drier side we've, we've found um, to be most effective. If we look at how much we actually need, it's really not much. Take an example of a 112 ton silo, we only need about 420 grams. So we're not talking about big volumes here. Um, for something like a harvester, we might need a couple of kilos um, through the harvester in the front. Um, but again, not, not large volumes. We're not, um, not putting a heap of, heap of this stuff in, just enough to we're really light dusting. How do we do it? How do we apply DE, diatomaceous earth? For silos, cone bottom silos, uh, a little blowback gun. Uh, you can see here, um, so we open the top lid of the silo, open the bottom lid, we measure out our, our quantity of, of diatomaceous earth in a bucket or, or something similar and then using the air compressor and the Venturi gun, the blowback gun, um, we blow it up through the silo. And you'll quickly get a cloud of dust here, like in the right-hand picture. Um, once you've, you've put your, your measured quantity in, step back, have a look, and the dust will start floating out the top of the silo. When you see that start to happen, shut the lid, close the bottom manhole, um, and, and that silo's done. Other people uh, I've seen and, and heard used uh, leaf blowers and those sorts of things. Um, to get the, the dry, dry side um, or diatomaceous earth dust into the silo. Anything um, like that would be effective. What we're trying to do is get an even coating around the silo walls, uh, and the roof even and the base. Um, it can be applied as a slurry, which is particularly good for sheds. Um, concrete up the walls and, and the furlins in the shed uh, mixed with water. It is pretty hard on pumps, so be aware of that. Um, so if people want more information on that, I'm, I'm certainly happy to help with that, um, applying as a slurry. 
Um, do consider um, personal protective equipment, um, a dust mask, um, some gloves, and, and certainly goggles. As I said, this stuff is pretty abrasive, so um, it, it's nasty in the eyes. Make sure you do wear goggles and a good dust mask. The other warning I, I'd put out there, um, as I said, it's not chemical based, it's a safe product to use. Um, I would hate for, for people to, to run into trouble though storing pulses or oil seeds. If they happen to get a, a, a bit of this um, diatomaceous earth settling in the cone of the silo, um, and then you've got a bit of discolouring on, on a pulse or oil seed, um, I'd hate for that to downgrade to blow the grain. So uh, my suggestion there is to, to use it, do, do the hygiene, do the structural treatment, do I to most of earth, and then just before harvest, if you're going to store pulses or oil seeds, just give that silo a quick rinse out, just to make sure there's no um, no no quantities of DE that have compiled somewhere that that might get in your sample. A few key points on uh, on diatomaceous earth it takes about five to ten days to, to kill insects, um, but it's effective for but in the six to 12 month range. So again, that's why we suggest can be applied in the outskirts. Um, I guess as near as 10 days before harvest, but the earlier the better is, but is the key message there. Um, can be applied as a dust or a slurry. Um, it's most effective in dry environments, so under 65% relative humidity. So um, the think about inside your silos is relatively dry. Inside your equipment, your machine in the shed is again is relatively dry. Um, it's not chemical based, um, no pest resistance, which is a really good thing. Um, so, so that's why we, we recommend that as the main structural treatment. Um, as I just said, oh, I'd recommend to rinse silos just before storing oil seeds and pulses for that added extra extra um, security to make sure we don't get downgraded on those, those high value commodities. Um, and again, make sure we wear our, our gloves, dust mask and um, and actually goals I need to add to that is, uh, is goals. Just a warning, it, it is registered product. Um, it, it can be added to grain. It, it says on the label you can actually add it to grain. Um, that used to be a common thing these days. We see more and more grain buyers actually prefer that it's not used in that way. It really does change the flow of the grain. Um, we're talking about cereals only here, of course. Um, so we actually don't recommend it be added to grain. There's other suggestions I hear people say, what if you add a little bit to the first bit of grain that goes in the silo and add a bit to the last bit of grain that goes in the silo to form a bit of a cap or a barrier? Um, in theory, yes, good theory. What happens in practice is uh, we can expect there'll be some insects in that grain bulk somewhere. And if we've got a barrier on the top and the bottom, we're not only trying to stop insects from coming into that grain, all stops also stopping insects getting out so we might go and have a look at the grain in storage at any point and say oh walks clean I can't see any, so any insects even sip a bit of grain from the top but what could be happening is insects breeding down in the middle of that grain stack they're just not coming to the surface because of the DE so I actually wouldn't recommend that as a practice um, for the risk that there could be insect activity in the middle of the grain stack in the middle of the silo um, and we can't see it at the top or the bottom because of the DE effect. Key points um, to run through again, clean up during the cooler months. So this time of year um, is well worth doing. Make sure you include machinery in the cleanup, dispose of that waste grain, um, and then follow up with an uh, application of structural treatment um, to the grain storages and equipment. So that's, that's hygiene and structural treatments. Um, it, it, it's really quite quick and simple. There's, there's nothing too complex to it, which I really like. Anything that's simple and, 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 and also cost effective, um, I think is a good thing. So it doesn't have to be complicated, common sense, but it really does make a big difference to our, starting with our grain storage clean, um, gives us our best chance for a good result. So I'll ask a minute in a minute for you guys to um, to certainly use that question uh, and answer window. Type your questions in there now. Um, I'm sure there'll be some questions that you guys will come with or that, that I might have sparked. Um, while you're doing that, I'll just reiterate if people would like more information, 
storedgrain.com.au is a website you can go to. Um, you can contact us, the Grain Storage Extension team, on info at storedgrain.com.au. Or you can call the hotline at any stage, 1800 Weevil, and that will put you in contact with your closest grain storage specialist. While you're typing your questions, um, another reminder that the next webinar will be on the 10th of September, same time, 10 a.m., and we're going to have a look at upgrades to existing storage. And so keep an, keep an eye out for that one. Um, also keep an eye out for uh, an email that will be sent to you shortly. Um, we'll just put a, a 30 second survey in there to get some feedback on these webinars and, and check if you guys are getting value out of them and what we could do to improve them. So have we got any questions? Anyone, uh, could there be any question they would like to ask? Happy to, to, to take those now. If you want to type them in the uh, question and answer window. while you're thinking of your questions there. Um, one of the, the ones I often get asked at workshops is can we use a product like diatomaceous earth around the silo, so around the, the base of the silo. Uh, look, you can. Um, as we said in the previous couple of slides there, it works best in areas that are, that are dry, uh, under 65% relative humidity. So for those areas around the silos, we were actually better off to use a spray on product um, Something like a phenytrothine as a, a structural treatment um, is good for the grass and, and, and gravel or, or concrete areas around the silos. We can actually use those sort of products um, as a structural treatment for, for that purpose. Um, we keep the diatomaceous earth for the inside the storages and inside the machine. I can't see any questions coming in. I'm hoping if there are questions, you guys will figure out how to ask them. Um, by all means, if you, if you do think of something later, um, please feel free to call that hotline, one 800 Weeble, and that will come straight through to your, your nearest grain storage specialist. Um, certainly consult the storedgrain.com.au website. There is a fact sheet on there on hygiene and structural treatments, um, which includes uh, most of the content that we've just been through. And if there's no further questions, um, thank you again for joining us. Uh, and thank you to the BCG for hosting. Uh, we look forward to catching up with you again on the 10th of September um, for a webinar on uh, upgrading existing storage. Thanks again.